Hey everyone, Irit here, and technically I guess this could be another part in my painting an abstract flower series. <laughs> All the ways you can fail painting an abstract floral. <laughs> but I would say this is probably more accurately named studio sessions. I think maybe that's what this series should be named just studio session. So I think today's focus is going to be finding kind of a routine that works for you. If you paint daily or you want to paint daily and one of the things you struggle with is, you know, how to get started, how to warm up. There are a lot of warm up exercises out there and, you know, if you enjoy kind of painting along, then you can search for those on YouTube. You can look on Skillshare. There are a lot of things you could do. This is just my way or my way that particular day. There are a few things that I feel just help and a few things that I have done in the past and I don't really enjoy anymore. And I'll try and share some of those with you. So I try to start when I'm sitting down and I have time to paint. I start with something smaller. Smaller is less intimidating you can, you know, get through it kind of fast and it just gets you going. So in this particular case, you saw it was just a pen sketch. Uh, this is another something I'm trying to implement more into my daily routine, more sketching in pencil and pen. I really enjoy it. I love the way that it looks and I do see a place for it also in my finished pieces, let's say. It's something that I am incorporating, um, especially for the moment, especially pencil sketches, but uh, also pen, I think at some point will find its way there, pen and ink. Now we go into the watercolors. So you can have a few, you know, um, what are they called? Rituals. <laughs> And one of them could be to wet your paint. And I have to give credit here to Angela Fair. I know I've been mentioning her in a lot of my videos. I have learned a lot from her. I'm part of her fearless artist community. I share, I think almost daily, my progress, my paintings there. It's a really safe, nurturing, supportive place. And so a lot of the things that she teaches kind of resonate with me and I try, you know, I listen and <laughs> I try to pay attention. <laughs> I take what I like. And um, yeah, so she was talking in one of her videos about kind of those rituals. I think she was like mixing paint in her palette or something like that. So for me, that starting getting into my watercolors, it would be just wetting each and every well, just in case I want to use the paints. You know, sometimes some paints never get used, but it's just a way to keep going. And today I decided to pick up a brush that I haven't used as much. This is, what is this? I will link you below. It's like a sword brush. It has these ridiculously long bristles. This is from Da Vinci. And it is fun to play with. Um, yeah, it's not kind of my go-to. I'm kind of lazy. I don't like to work with a lot of brushes. So I prefer to have one or two brushes that do everything. <laughs> and <laughs> But this was fun. I, I do feel it's important to give your products you know, give them a chance. Even if you received something, you tried it out, you didn't like it, you know, try it again next month, next week. See, maybe you will like it more. And what I'm doing now is just kind of pa paint play in my sketchbook. And I'm not going to say that this wasn't enjoyable. It was, but this is an example of actually the kind of things that I feel are not working for me personally because they are just a bit too vague. And that's just me. I don't want you to get the idea that there are, you know, right or wrong things to do, to warm up, to paint. 
not at all. But I'm just telling you, like, how do you know if something is working or not? I think certain things you can get that immediate answer. You know, you tried something, it works, you like the way that it looks. But then other things, it just takes time. And for me, working in a sketchbook is kind of an evolving thing. As I paint more and more, I want my sketchbooks to be more intentional. I have a pile of finished sketchbooks that are filled with, I call them nothing pages, just like paint there's nothing there. It could be swatches, it could be just blobs of paint. And I'm not going to say that, you know, I wish I hadn't done that. All those things brought me to where I am. But I feel now with just a bit more focus and a bit more intention, I can make my sketchbooks work better for me and just look better and have more finished (laughs) sketches, which is kind of a weird thing to say. But Just have pieces or exercises that I can learn from. And yeah, this just like putting paint on paper is not the thing for me. Now, I'm not saying that I don't want to do what I'm doing right now on screen. I just realized I don't want to do it in a sketchbook. I want to do it on just a small piece of paper. I... I've decided I can do all of these like exercises on cellulose paper, which is cheaper than cotton. And just I ordered a big block of it and I'm going to rip some pages to smaller pieces. And I want to use those for just paint play for those beginning sketches of just, you know, putting paint on paper. I enjoy the process. I don't want it in my sketchbook. And preferably, I will toss those small pieces of paper once they have served their purpose. So I hope that makes sense. And to you, I hope I managed to explain myself. I have been working more on loose sheets. Another thing that I've been warming up on, I have these really small blocks from Prima marketing which is a company aimed more at like uh, crafters and kind of that vintage shabby chic kind of mixed media stuff but they also have watercolors and watercolor papers the paper is not great but for these kind of warm-ups it's perfect it's small at least the the ones that I have are really small and that's I'm happy to warm up on them so Moving forward, I'm not going to use my sketchbook for, you know, just the dumping zone of everything. Uh, But that's just me again. And it's been a process. I've gone through, I don't know how many sketchbooks, 10, 20, whatever. So it's just, yeah, it's an ongoing changing process. Let's say it like this. And I think... I think this will be the last painting for today. There's a kid. I think that was Ella. (laughs) That hand looked bigger (laughs) than Lily's. (laughs) So you can see in this session. Yeah, I had to stop, I guess. Someone wanted something. You can see that the session wasn't very productive, I guess. If you just want to look at the result. What did I do? I made this mess in my sketchbook. And now I'm just going to create a little, another little small, uh, I guess, study of my hibiscus. Um, I can't remember what my goal was here. I think I just wanted to create another version of things that worked before, maybe with slightly looser brush work. Yeah, I think that was where I was going. So just get the shapes and then just add more brush strokes. It turned out okay. I like the colors. Again, I think I used too much blue. I don't want to use so much blue in the next versions. But it was, you know, fun. I guess. (laughs) Sometimes painting something again and again does make you more comfortable and 
and you don't wonder so much if you know if you can paint it how it will turn up I think here I, I just wanted to play yes okay I remember now I wanted to focus more on the areas around my flower and that was the purpose of this particular study I kind of wanted to get a clear idea of which colors do I want to put where around my main flower so that's why the flower itself here is less important just because I'm testing other things and also I was really enjoying the brushwork that I had done in the previous mess up part five so I wanted to explore that a bit more you can see this is just a smaller piece of paper this is again cellulose paper um, it worked well for this purpose you can see the colors blend nicely on it I really don't feel like I'm missing out on anything I also wanted to explore some of the line work in the flower with slightly different colors so mix some interesting violets with my cobalt violet and ultramarine blue and the dusk pink just see how they worked in the flower and not just keep it so one so like monochromatic but really try to bring harmony in the different parts of this painting i think this is hard for me to <laughs> to know what i'm thinking because i'm catching up on narrating I can't narrate a video because my kids always <laughs> interrupt me <laughs> but now they are out of the house for a couple of hours so my throat is already um, feeling the price of suddenly talking a lot but you can see if you remember the last video you can see that I'm bringing in some more of that brush wor work what's the difference the difference here is I'm overthinking it and in the previous video it all just came out naturally because I didn't care <laughs> I just went to town <laughs> on that painting and yeah you know that's do you know did you have this experience if you've painted something several times that the first time where you had the lowest expectations and kind of felt you know you didn't kind of know what you were doing turned out to be the best version <laughs> once you started thinking about what you were doing you just kept messing it up that has happened to me a lot uh, I don't know how to fix it <laughs> it's I think it's like that saying you know dance like nobody's watching I don't know paint like you're not thinking <laughs> like switch your brain off <laughs> I think that's definitely the key to some of the success in intuitive and loose uh, painting which yeah it's turning out to be the the journey that I'm on just finding what that means for me you know that perfect color scheme that perfect color combo those brush marks just exploring this I don't think I've ever painted something so often and enjoyed it so much I I have like followed tutorials but so many times my heart wasn't in it and for some reason this is you know holding my interest at least for the next two videos <laughs> Um, yeah I've been painting all kinds of things some of them off camera I'll try and do my best to kind of share everything with you so you can get a better idea of what I'm doing and how I'm progressing I know seeing the real process is helpful to many of you and I hope I can share that with you bye